Hello again everybody, Claire here, on to the next stage. It's actually the next day and we've got quite a lot of nice weather in Spain. So I've opened the window, hopefully we won't have the same problems that we had with the lighting yesterday, but let's carry on and see how we're getting on. So what I did overnight is I have just traced all of my pieces onto my fabric, my mock suede fabric. Which So this is hopefully you can see this texture on here today a little bit, maybe. Quite nice but what I wanted to point out to you especially to the beginners is that it's very common it, so where where is it on the patterned fabric we placed it in order to chase the pattern really so that that we did that fussy cutting if you remember where we positioned our foot pads and our ear um, inserts onto the patterned fabric to capture the best bit of the fabric that we wanted the best bit of that pattern now when we're on a plain fabric like this one and we're going to be cutting out um, the limbs for the for the lunar characters we actually want those to be on a straighter grain of, of the fabric so we either need them all to be going straight down or all straight across now ideally you want them to run alongside what's called the selvage and that is this part of the this part of the um fabric that has got like a fuzzy end and it's got these little dots where the fabric is actually fed onto the rollers when they're feeding it through to process it um, and another little tip that I didn't realise is that you can tell the top of your fabric is when the little holes for the um, bumps here are pushing upwards because if you think about it the rollers that carry the fabric have got the pins that stick upwards on them so it would make sense that the top of the fabric is pulled through so that the holes appear as if the, the spikes are going through so if you look at the selvage sometimes you can tell from the front and the back if it's difficult to tell the difference you can always use that as a bit of a clue and that's helped me out of a fix once or twice actually knowing that little trick so just a little trick to pass on to you but if you look on here all of my so you can hear me still all of my things apart from the tail look have been put north to south alongside this um bound selvage so just i'm just pointing that out to you and if you look here as well we've got this mirroring going on i've got two left and two right of the arms and again on the legs i've got two left and two right two left and two right <laughs> sorry you can't hear me when i've got it above, above me so what i'm going to do next is i'm just going to cut these out so if you're a beginner it doesn't matter whether you're cutting out clothes or you're cutting out home decor products you wouldn't cut them on on the diagonal so um, let's just use this again because it's called on the we don't want to go on the bias for these things some things you do but for these animals we don't so again here we've got a very nice little selvage which is the ear fabric that I used for um, my Wilhelmina mouse so we've got a straight of grain going across now there's the warp and the weft and I must admit I don't actually remember the difference I know one goes left to right and one goes top to bottom when your fabric to the selvage for me it doesn't matter too much i just remember that all of my pattern pieces should run north to south along the selvage edge like this so even when we fold the fabric up we still use that selvage as our guideline then to, to to place all our pattern pieces so you place everything this way down okay if you're struggling or you've got a border print fabric fabric you can can put them across this way too but you try and keep them all the same way on your pattern piece so if you're cutting a front and a back of a top say you wouldn't have one going north to south and one going east to west you'd have them all going um north to south if you can do the reason being is that on fabric it's very stiff this way and it's very stiff that way because the fibers are so strong are so strong but if you come across the diagonal if we look we've got the point there and we're going diagonally across you actually get a bit of stretch and that is called the bias that's the, the the term given to when it's on the diagonal like that and sometimes we want a bias cut skirt because we want those folds to fold really nicely but on our characters we don't want that bulge because we want the the limbs to stay the shape that they're supposed to especially when we stuff them so on your so whereas on your ears and on the um, inset and the foot pads we can chase the fabric a little bit because they're such small pieces it's not going to make much difference but if you look at this diagonal across here and the difference you get on the stretch here it's quite a lot and we don't want any of that stretch we want it to be like this where there's no stretch at all or like this 
where there's no stretch at all, very little that way, a little bit that way, but not much at all, um, and nothing at all on north to south, which is why it's the strongest to place it that way, which is why we put our documents, uh, documents, put our patterns that way. Um, but as I say, on the bias, you can hopefully see how, how much my hands are moving apart, and that's giving a stretch on that fabric that we just don't want for those limbs. So, Another little top tip when you're cutting out your, your fabric is to um, make sure that you're cutting it straight of grain, north to south and on the selvage, ideally. Um, if you can't quite fit it that way, you can go east to west, but better, but try and do that. But definitely keep your um, pattern pieces so that they are north to south or east to west. They're not going sideways like that because that's when you're going to get your stretch and we don't want the stretch on those pieces. So that's the next little tip that I've got for there. So um, I'm going to now going to cut out these now that I've got all of these on here properly. The other thing is that um, with, oh, I keep forgetting things, um, with the nap as well, by putting all of our character pieces this way, the tail I'm not so worried about, but all of our main pieces this way, it'll make sure, think of that velvet again, so the nap will all brush down the same way. So the sides of the face will both be the same the same same orientation and the legs and the arms will all look the same color so that's why we're doing it as we are with that um, and hopefully that little bit's um, useful for you so i'll get these cut out and then we'll actually get onto some sewing so i hope you're having a great day i hope you're enjoying all of this um sew along leave me some comments in the bottom if i'm going too fast or if i missed something out i can always pull it in later on because I the chances are it won't be just you that's um, learning that new or, or wants to know the answer to that question there may be others as well who, who are too nervous to ask even though I don't bite but um, might be too nervous to ask so let's have a go and see um, see how you get on with that you know remember to add your seam allowance draw everything out get it all ready cut round and we'll be ready to go so um, I'll see you next in the next one when we actually start to sew thank you for watching bye <laughs>